vampires. They're everywhere, all around you, especially at night. Vampires. What do I have to say about them? If you make one mistake when it comes across making them, it's your ass. Vampires. Yeah. <coughs> alright, alright, I'm done with this. <coughs> you, you get the idea how this is going today. Alright, hello everybody and welcome to another special movie review vlog. And this time around I'm taking a look at the 1998 classic Blade. Now, for the, now you may be asking yourself, why Blade? That's more of a comic book film. Well, it's one part fantasy and two parts horror because there are a lot of horror elements of it when it comes to this comic book movie especially when, when it comes to the lore of vampires. And I figured I might as well cover at least a, a horror-related movie that is also comic book-based, so I can put to my list as well, which you can find on, on the IMDb link right here. And after discovering that the new mutants... Not only that, but after finding out that the new Mutants movie coming out next year in April is actually going to be, going to be a rated R horror movie, I figured I might as well jump on the bandwagon like everyone else doing some horror-related comic book movies. And there are a few in particular. And if you guys happen to come across my Twitter page a couple of weeks back, I did do a poll as to what I should review next that is comic book related and also horror related. And by the winner of a one vote margin, it turns out it's gonna be Blade. So with that said, let's dive right into it. So Blade is the superhero horror movie which stars Wesley Snipes as the hero himself. And he is about one part one part human and also one part vampire. In other words, he has all all the vampire strengths, none of their weaknesses, other than the thirst for blood. And that pretty much is a bit of a setback for him, but which also proves to be a bit of a subplot for him as well as the movie goes on. But apart from that, there was a lot of fantastic stuff I love about this movie. And watching it the other night, I comes to show that this movie has done pretty well for itself, especially in the age of Marvel Studios in its infancy when it comes to them testing out what kind of movies are good or bad for a general audience. And apparently a rated R movie of a superhero who hunts vampires was pretty underrated for the most part. Sure, it didn't get the star-studded reviews, you know, positive reviews they get from everyone, but I thought it was quite a classic cult hit. Now, apart from the memorable hero, there are also some memorable sidekicks and villains to go in here as well. From Deacon Frost, played by uh, Stephen Dorff, which, if you ask me, is he's quite awesome, to his buddy little uh, villainous thug sidekick, played by Donald Logue, who is quite humorous and could take a slicing here and there and also be set on fire. And speaking of the sidekicks for the heroes, Chris Christopherson, grizzled old and Pretty much just being who he is is pretty much hilarious throughout this entire movie up until the very end or his end. And, spoiler alert. And, and as for everything else, there was a lot of in, this, in 1998. There was a lot of practical effects that they used in here that worked pretty well, and then also some small CG effects, especially when it came to the vampires getting killed off left and right. They either get whether it get whether they got exploded. That was a little bit too cartoony and CG-ish, but there's also some vampires that CG that work pretty well for them pretty much getting slashed up and turning to ash, which look, which actually did pretty well. There's also this other character, uh, I forget her name, who's also kind of like a victim who's got caught in the crossfire of this uh, blade and vampire feud that war that he has, and she is okay for the most part. She, she does her role and tries to help out as much as she can, but I just felt like she was kind of a waste. And uh, there was this really awkward scene near the end of the movie between her and Blade where she had to give her blood to Blade, and I thought that was a bit of a downturn in my, in my opinion. But overall, for the most part, it was pretty much like, apart from the, the great uh, gunplay that they had here, great sword fighting, you know, a lot of great uh, fight scenes as well. There was also the uh, sub, this, the main plot of the story of why the, of how the vampires, how Deacon Frost was going to become a vampire god and everything else, and take over the world for vamp all vampires out there. And I thought that was pretty good. And another thing I love about this movie is that unlike all the other, this was like a more of a low-level, grounded type of superhero movie, kind of like you would see on the Netflix shows like Luke Cage, Daredevil, or Jessica Jones for that matter, in which they mostly work on a street level type of thing and kind of do their own part, which in this 
And this movie, it does work for itself. And overall, I would have to say this movie is a near perfect comic book film, and it's actually one of the best ones, even for even before its time, before the X Men movies or the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, started uh, getting traction. And with that said, I would have to give this movie a four and a half out of five stars. And uh, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, quick little vlog. So if you guys like what you see, feel free to subscribe, hit me up on Patreon if you guys want to pledge $1 a month for your support and requests, and check out all my video other videos, because with the YouTube ad apocalypse being the way it is, and from what I hear, it's going to be a lot worse, so every little bit helps, whether it be a comment, a like, or heck, just turn on, the no turn on your notifications to so it can let you know when I'm going to be uploading a new video. And with that said, I will see you all next time.